Good evening, and thank you all for tuning in. On behalf of all of us at the locally based, independently owned bookstore, Books and Books, in Miami, Florida, and in partnership with Miami Book Fair, it's my pleasure to welcome you to a virtual evening with Nora Raleigh Baskin, Debbie Reed Fisher, Deborah Green, Jonathan Rosen, and Melissa Rosk to discuss their debut novel, Coming of Age, published by our friends at Albert Whitman and Company. Normally, I would be introducing all of them. However, today, since there are so many authors, I'm going to allow the moderator to introduce each of our guests and let them get right into it. So let's welcome them all to the stage. Hi, I'm Debbie. Hi, welcome. Hi. Hi, I'm Nora. Hi, Nora. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. This is our moderator, Jonathan. Hello. Hello. <laughs> we have Deborah coming in now. Hello. And last but not least, we have Melissa. So I'll let you all take over. Thank you. Thank you. First, thanks, Melissa, and, and to Books and Books for doing this. Very nice of you. And, uh, you know, we're thrilled to be here. But uh, since we already did the introductions, I just want to go around a little bit. You know, I'm Jonathan Rosen, as mentioned, and I want to ask each of you, you know, what made you to decide to become involved with this project? I'm going to start it off with uh, Debbie, since Debbie organized this for us. So, <laughs> Debbie, take well, it away. All right, I'll take it away. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, when I was given the opportunity to be part of um, an anthology of bar and bat mitzvah stories, the first thing I thought was how fantastic this has never been done before. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized I have a very unique story to tell um, about a bat mitzvah. And uh, I feel, I figured, you know, all of us have unique stories. You know, bar and bat mitzvah is the same. And I really enjoyed um, the anthology Once Upon an Aid. And I think um, for librarians and teachers who are always looking for diverse books, those make a very nice pairing. It's for religious diversity is often not a diversity that you, um, you know, Jewish books are usually not included in that. And I think with this anthology, which, hello, here it is. <laughs> <laughs> Just in case you didn't know. Um, I and think- By it the way, there is a link at the bottom of the screen for everyone to purchase the book here at the bottom there if, uh, if they'd like from Books in Books. And we hope right. that you do. So sorry, Debbie, go ahead. No, so, I mean, I just think um, there's, there's just so much that's appealing about this anthology in terms of, um, you know, representation and also for Jewish kids who, I mean, this makes a beautiful um, uh, bar or bat mitzvah gift. You know, you put the, you could put the check inside it. You know, there's a lot you can do. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> I just love you the idea of that. all <laughs> I just did. I did. Because who needs another set of pens when you can have this? <laughs> or a card that you're just going to throw away. Just right. And just Nora, how about you? How, how, what made you decide to become involved with the project? Who, uh, me? Yes. Y you. <laughs> well, that's good. <laughs> that's my, my, my short answer. So seriously, really. Thank you. Well, then thank you. Okay, Deborah. Um, yeah, Jonathan, you, uh, I knew you from Israel and uh, we went to Israel together three years ago uh, with the group with PJ Library. Um, and I was really honored to be asked to write for it. But I also, you know, I was bat mitzvah and my three kids had bar and bat mitzvahs. And I think a lot of people don't really understand all the work that goes into them. I think um, people who aren't Jewish, think it's kind of like a 16, uh, sweet 16 party. So, and I, I wrote a humorous story, but I do kind of want to show that it's not just a party. It's like, you know, a lot of studying before and, you know, writing a speech um, and just being a really meaningful service besides the party. But I did, of course, add humor because that's what I like to do. I'm, I'm so, about um, to ask you all about your stories is the next question, so. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, that's, okay. I, was, I was honored to be able to, to yeah, do that. Thank you. And thank you for doing it. Melissa? Oh, <laughs> is this a trick question? No, <laughs> no, it's not. I've known, I've known Jonathan for a few years. We um, debuted together. We had our um, 
debut novels in 2017 and we always we were talking back and forth and i agreed that it's an amazing opportunity to have bar and bob it's with stories and it's never been done before and to do something that's different and important is a gift so how could anyone say no to this and i was grateful that jonathan approached me so thank you <laughs> that's well, it. sort of been done before <laughs> as jonathan knows <laughs> i mean i can't well I'll, I'll say one I meant I'm an know. anthology. Right. Yeah, yeah, totally. An anthology. It's never been well, done that, before. That's what I meant. Well, one of the things that uh, I did, and I, I thank all of you for for accepting, you know, right away, and and everyone said yes, you know, in, in the anthology right away. So that was great. Uh, the same thing that I think Nora's hinting at a little bit is that to me there was a, such a lack of Jewish projects and and available. And, you know, I think we've all been told, I think we spoke about it, not maybe not all, I don't want to speak for everyone, but I know I've been told and many others have been that, you know, Jewish books don't sell or that Jewish books, you know, don't count as part of being diverse. And uh, yeah. I've been even told by an agent, you know, make, I was doing a Jewish book and he said, make it less Jewish. <laughs> so, so we've all been told that. So I wanted to see, you know, Jewish projects out there and, you know, for, Jewish kids to ident you know see themselves in books, and for non-Jewish kids to see that Jews you know are just like them, that they can relate very easily. So that was this was very important to me. This was a passion project, and again, I, I thank you all for doing it uh, and being oh. involved with it and, and contributing such great stories. And and speaking of stories, let's go into. I wanted each to tell about your story a little bit, and again, we'll hold it up again for. The coming of age. Tell about your story a little bit and uh, what made you decide to write it. And again, we'll go back. I'll go back in the same order. Debbie, let's start with you. Okay. Well, I didn't have a bat mitzvah when I was 12 or 13. Um, I lived in Athens, Greece at the time, and I was told that there was a lot of terrorism in the one Jewish synagogue uh, that was in Athens. And uh, it was actually closed, shut down because of. Um, the death threats and the terrorism. And of course, the Air Force wouldn't send a rabbi um, for my bat mitzvah. So it wasn't uncommon, really, though, in those days. It was 19, gosh, I won't tell you, but it was the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> and it wasn't that uncommon for girls not to have one. Boys always had one, but and now girls all seem to have them. But, um, you know, I had my bat mitzvah at age 18 in Israel with three other girls um, who had not had, three other young women who had not ever had a bat mitzvah. So my story um, was really about what a privilege it is that you can't always have a bat mitzvah mm -hmm. and that you have to have Jewish pride also because the character in my story, this is what I'll tell you, tries to hide her identity, which of course never works. And really the theme, the takeaway is, if you're proud of yourself, everyone else will be too. Um, and, you know, I joked a little bit when we first started talking about, you know, this is a gift and this and that. But one thing I really want to say about all of your stories that I really appreciated was that you showed the hard work that kids do. You showed the meaning behind it and that there's a stereotype that everyone has this big extravagant party. And that's absolutely not the case. I loved, Debbie, in, in your story, how it's in a parking lot. And Jonathan, you addressed that as well. And my bat mitzvah at age 18 was a boom box and a few friends and <laughs> no gifts. And I was thrilled. It was great because it was a very meaningful event. And I think at age 12 and 13, it's really an age of reckoning where kids have to reflect on what kind of person do they want to be? And I think all of our stories reflected that, and that's something I tried to do in mine. And and you didn't mention the name of your story. This is what I'll this tell you. This is what I'll tell you. This is what I'll tell you because she's holding it back. She's not telling people she's Jewish. She's not telling people who she is. And um, then she realizes this is what she has to tell people. Well, I'm going to have to teach you about a little doing self promotion a little bit later on. <laughs> Just remind me. <laughs> so, how about? How about, uh, let's go on to Nora. Hey. Um, well, I, I love following what you just said because I, I, I also did not have a, a bat mitzvah or become a, I did not have a, a bat mitzvah celebration because I didn't even know I was Jewish until I was 12. 
and and I, I I knew my mother was Jewish, but she had died, and I grew up with my father who was not. And um, it wasn't until I started grappling with my identity, as you're talking about, and wanting to reconnect with my mother, the history, the memory of my mother, which nobody talked about, and decided to become Jewish. So, so the I always talk about people making the decision to be Jewish, whether they're born Jewish or not, and um, I, I, I actually wrote a book a long time ago called The Truth About My Bat Mitzvah. And you're right, Jonathan, it was like, it's too Jewish, it's not Jewish enough. And, and I'm so glad that we're at a different place in our, our world, I guess. But um, what I learned and what I wanted to write about in my story, which is called Snowball, is that you don't have to celebrate, you don't have to mark the occasion, you don't have to have a bat mitzvah, you become a bat mitzvah. Right. And um, that's not to say that the people that, you know, do go through the whole ceremony and do all the work and lead a Shabbat service have done more than those people who just go to the bima or say a aliyah or, or do nothing because by virtue of being Jewish, you become responsible for the for the rest of the world and um so just to wrap up i had already written that story in that other book so when jonathan asked me i was like ah, what am i going to write about you know and so i asked my son and he told me that shout out to ben baskin he told me the story of the snowball dance and um how stressful it is and how everybody worried about it before it was happening but again that's not what it's about. It's not about what boy is going to ask you out or what boy is going to ask you to dance. It's my protagonist knows okay. that there's a lot more to it. And so she decides not to not to go out on the dance floor at all. That's great. How about Deborah? Um, I'm kind of sensing a theme because um, <clears throat> my thing is called Pandemic Bat Mitzvah. And it's kind of also about how um, you know, the inside is what counts more than the accoutrement. So she, so this is a girl who is expecting to have a moderate party for a bat mitzvah, and then the pandemic happens, and so they, you know, have 20 masks to guests outside of the temple parking lot. So, um, you know, I, I wrote it during the pandemic, and I was, you know, I, I really didn't think about much else besides the pandemic. Of course, after I had written it, I saw, which is kind of the danger of social media, someone had, someone had said, like, nobody should write about the pandemic. It's too soon. <laughs> it's like, oh, too late. <laughs> but, um, but I think I did want to convey that, um, you know, it's really about friends and family watching you um, grow up and accept Judaism and accept being kind of an adult or um, just, you know, accept the process of, and watch you, you know, do what you've um, practiced for the last four or five years and, and read out of the Torah. So I kind of wanted to show that. Um, but again, I, 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 uh, my, my main goal is always to entertain kids. So my main goal is you know, I had a lot of funny stuff and like a nosebleed and a, like a wardrobe malfunction and stuff like that. So I wanted to entertain kids and, and make them like reading about, you know, Jewish girl. But um, but I also kind of explored uh, real the real meaning behind uh, becoming a bat mitzvah. That's a great story too. And, and Melissa? Jonathan, you're going to need to remind me what the question was, but you know, it's it's funny. I introduce introduce I the story, and, okay. and what inspired you to write it? Originally, I was going to write about my own mitzvah, which was held at an Italian nightclub, which is no longer there. It's a defunct nightclub on 55th Street and Lexington Avenue in New York City. And it's across the street from Central Synagogue where I had my bat mitzvah. And my parents chose the venue because it was close and you know, convenient. And it was a weird place for a bat mitzvah. There were little grottoes there and it was dark and it was a little seemly. It wasn't quite 
write for a bat mitzvah, but my story, Grandma Merle's Last Wish, has nothing to do with my bat mitzvah. It's pure fiction. It's about a girl who is longing to figure out why is she being asked to have a bat mitzvah. Her grandmother, as her last wish, wanted her to have a bat mitzvah. And the girl in question, um, Bella, is not religious. She's Jewish, but, you know, she, as she said, you know, she's used to having bacon, lettuce, tomato sandwiches, and just lox and bagels, and that's the most Jewish thing she's ever done. So in my story, it's fiction, but to me, it's all about being what is Jewish enough? What does it mean yeah. to be Jewish? And who gets to be Jewish? Who gets to have a bat mitzvah? And is there a rule about how Jewish you need to be? And that, to me, sort of it struck a chord because um, personally, my parents wanted me to be bat mitzvah, but we weren't really religious. I was, um, I grew up reform as a reform Jew. We didn't go to school very often, except my old colleagues or maybe um, Simchat Torah or something, but we didn't go to temple. And my parents always wanted to make it seem as if we were more Jewish than we really were. So that's really what sort of made my mind go to this idea of what does it mean to be Jewish and who gets to be Jewish and doesn't matter. Do we get to claim it because we want it? Yes. And uh, it really shouldn't matter. And no one dictates who gets to be Jewish. We don't, we, that's not how this works. And that's where my story <clears throat> comes from. Melissa, that's so beautiful. I, can I jump on that, Jonathan? Of course. It, um, a lot of women have, of my you age. Jump. You jump, Nora. I'm jumping, I'm jumping, I'm jumping. Um, a lot of women have come up to me and said, I didn't think I was Jewish because I didn't have a bat mitzvah. And, it, and, and like Debbie said, in those days, in my days, girls didn't really do that. Um, I didn't do it for a different reason, but, and, and it's not true. Like you're like, like Melissa's saying, you, you choose to be Jewish. And, and it was just fascinating to me how many people, women in particular, don't think they're Jewish enough. And, and I'm glad that we're talking about this a lot. I mean, I'm glad. I'm a lot glad. It's not grammatic. Okay, forget that. You know what I mean. Okay. Very well, glad. We know what you That's mean. the word. Very. Okay. Well, Jonathan, so I, I just wanted to mention one thing before I forget. Sure. So a big theme in my story was um, anti-Semitism and how, mm -hmm. wait, how you're blindsided by it. And of course, right now, that's extremely relevant because there's a spike in anti-Semitic crimes all over the world, um, but in the United States, not since the 70s have they seen attacks like this. So the book is very timely. And I just wanted to mention, um, those of you who are watching, if you haven't clicked on that little link to buy the book, 10% of profits from this book mm -hmm. go to organizations that fight anti-Semitism. So it's a book about mitzvahs and you're doing a mitzvah. See what we did there? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'll say for my my story is, you know, the pocket watch. And I had when I asked everyone, I had not decided what to write for myself yet. I was just trying to get everyone together. You know, we I approached it with, with Henry Hurst, who's who's the co-editor. We approached all the people. So I started figuring that everyone was going to write, you know, these realistic type stories or memoir type things. So I just said, I'm gonna go off and do like a sci-fi story a sci-fi uh, bar mitzvah story. And then of course we did get a couple of sci-fi stories as well after I decided to do that. Uh, it has nothing <laughs> in common with my with my own uh, bar mitzvah except for the time travel element, which I shouldn't <laughs> talk about. <laughs> but that's what, again, the same theme that we've been talking about to me was the, the, the important thing was talk about that it's not the size of the party, not you know how many guests, not what celebrity you have showing up. It's, you know, passing on the traditions, you know, one, you know, down the line, you know, that was always drummed into me when I was a kid. Don't be the, uh, the one that breaks the, the chain, the link that breaks the chain. Yeah. So that's, that was the important thing, the aspect that I wanted to get out in my story and show that, you know, that the protagonist learns that, 
you know, there are more important things than uh, what gifts I'm going to get, what, you know, and how many people are showing up. So it was, it, it, it was, I had fun with it. It was, like I said, it's a sci-fi story, time travel. So it, it was definitely a lot of fun doing. And now Legion, and even though you've already spoken about, some of you have spoken about it a lot, let's talk about your own bat mitzvahs. And I'll talk a little bit about my own bar mitzvah. And first we're going to, before we get that, we should have a picture there. So maybe if some, if some people do, some people don't, but let's see the pictures from your bat mitzvahs and talk a little bit about your own, your own experiences during that. Debbie, let's start. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, well, my I'm 18 in mine. That's another thing I think um, a lot of people who aren't Jewish don't know. You can actually have a bar or bat mitzvah mm-hmm. after at, at any time. You can have it when you're 85 if you want. So um, this was in Israel, and every single one of my friends. Look at the shoulder pads. I'm just like noticing that. <laughs> that crazy. Um, every single one of my friends did a piece of the service. We didn't have uh, a rabbi uh, doing it. And uh, my parents flew in from the States and we had a cake and a boom box and it was fantastic. <laughs> you, don't, you don't need a rabbi either. That's great. No, it was very, very mm-hmm. meaningful because one, right? there was four of us, so it was a banot mitzvah. Mm-hmm. And one of the girls was a rough, Russian refuse neck. Wow. And she didn't wow. speak wow. English that well. And I just remember the two of us in our dorm it was a gap year after high school and we were in the dorm one o'clock in the morning with the cassette tapes you know learning the hebrew uh, so we wouldn't wake up everybody in our room as we were preparing for it so it was very meaningful it really was how about you nora well um here's no i i did not have a pot mitzvah because i didn't know i was jewish you know i sort of pretending i was and trying to fake it which you know as our theme goes i didn't have to fake it but I thought I did. Um, but when I was interestingly, so I did have a, a celebration and I did read from, no, I didn't read from the Torah because I don't, I can't, <laughs> um, but I had my Aaliyah at 50. So um, not to, just a year ago. No, okay. Um, <laughs> that was, but interestingly, when I was 12, which is the age, you know, for girls, technically, was when I decided to wear, my grandmother took me to Israel and she bought me a Jewish star. And in sixth grade, right at the age, it would happen traditionally, it happened organically for me. So this is my sixth grade school picture. So I don't know, Debbie, like I wanted people to know. And so this is what I wore in my sixth grade school picture. Oh, wow. Oh, you know, and I, I so I didn't, I, I, you know, kind of cool. It's going, uh, Deborah. Um, so I, uh, I actually was, you know, I went to Sunday school and I went to Hebrew school twice a week. Um, my best friend who was my best friend for decades, um, she didn't go to my uh, elementary school or middle school or anything, but we knew each other from temple. So I, I really was very involved with Temple. Um, oh, here's a picture. That's me and my mom. Ah. <laughs> oh. So, <laughs> um, anyway, so it was, um, you know, I studied really hard for it. Um, it was a tough time in my life because my parents separated mm-hmm. when I was about 10, and it took a long time. I think their divorce was finalized right before my bat mitzvah. So it was, it was a tough time. And I also have my grandfather died and it was a really hard time, but you know, I really, I, I used to babysit the rabbi. I mean, I, we had two rabbis, both were really great. And I really found kind of a home in my temple um, with a, you know, a separate group of kids, including my best friend um, from my regular school friends. So to me, it was a really, really special time. Melissa? Okay, I shouldn't admit this, but I will, because why not? Um, Pretty. The, I went to Sunday school. Yeah, this is getting good, right? Yeah. Um, I went to Sunday school, you know, Hebrew school. The kids weren't very nice. They really weren't very nice. And I didn't like it. And mm-hmm. I didn't really want to get bothered because I didn't understand what it meant, the significance. But I had one. And 
I'm going to show you pictures because some, I'll try not to show you too many because they're boring. Um, my parents and me, I was very short. That's just <laughs> can you hold it closer to the, the bear? Can you bring it closer oh, to the camera? Is this close you, Whoa, is this good? Okay. You could come closer. There. Okay. <laughs> but, okay, well, okay. Well, okay. Um, this is more. Can you see that? Yes. These are my friends. Yes. My best yes. friend Chena is over here. Um, she's actually my best friend who was in my, she's the um, best friend, Cat Queen Comes Clean, my debut novel. So that's my very best friend. And um, I don't know why this guy kind of photobombed our picture, but, you know, <laughs> he's probably very nice. Um, my father is dancing with Claire Lepselter. He's having way too much fun. This is my father. He's having a wild time. He's like Lester, wild man. Um, oh my God, this is my favorite. This is my father kissing Evelyn Godman. Can you see this? <laughs> it's very inappropriate. Oh, yeah. Like, why is he kissing Evelyn Godman? I don't know why, but there he is. Can you see that? That's the yeah, title of your next book. Crazy. But anyway, <laughs> right? Kissing Evelyn Godman. This Godwin. is my grandmother. This is, that's a good one. This is my grandmother, Molly. Um, she's not like Grandma Merle and Grandma Merle's Last Wish. Um, I was very close to my grandmother. She came over from Russia, and I adored my grandmother. She was such a lovely woman. And as you can see, we're both very short. My grandmother was about four nine, so I don't know what that makes me, but I was very tiny. And I wore a hideous dress. I don't know if you can see the dress. Oh, wait, here's the rabbi. Look, there he is. That's the dress. But I'll stop now because I could go. Oh, wait, one last one and then I'll stop. This is Fred. Look at Fred. Look how tired he is from dancing. Can you see that? Right? Fred exhausted because it was a wild time. So that's all I have to say. It was good. Jonathan, well, <laughs> go on. Well, uh, I was. Like Debbie, mine, I was living in Israel at the time of uh, my bar mitzvah. And uh, I, I have better pictures, but I like this one here too. So let's see if I can. This is my dad. I, my dad at my bar mitzvah. We, oh. I, had mine, I had mine at the Western Wall. So it was like, you know, very yeah. meaningful for me. And, uh, and I, I, I've said this now, you know, to a lot of people. It didn't mean as much to me at the time. As it did later on, when I went back, you know, to recently to a trip to Israel with Deborah was on, and when I went to the wall, it was very meaningful to me looking back at my bar mitzvah that you know I had I you know saw people gathering there for bar mitzvahs, and it just was just really resonated with me, you know how every year that this tradition that people are going there and just you know the history of it involved. So that that did mean a lot to me as far as you know the ceremony is. We did not have a lot of money, and uh, we had our bar mitzvah. We were living in an absorption center at the time, and we had our bar mitzvah in a bomb shelter. <laughs> and so, and I, I wow. thought about doing that as a story, you know, bar mitzvah in a bomb shelter. I thought about doing that as my story for a little bit, <laughs> but decided to, uh, right. you know, go the, the sci fi route instead. But, you know, looking back in it, uh, you know, it, it definitely meant a lot more to me now than it did as, as a kid. So, uh, that's fun. I think we have time because we, we want to get to some of the questions too. So we'll have time for one more question over here before we turn it on back. So but also, what, Jonathan, yes. they'll be they'll be coming of age too. Exactly. Exactly. Because <laughs> <laughs> I want to hear more about that. Right. And so let's. Me what do you too. want readers to take out of the, your your story in particular and the anthology in general? What would you like readers to take out of it? So Debbie, let's start with you. Well, I think, um, you know, we've, we've kind of touched on a lot of this already, but um, as we were saying before about representation and being told not to make our stories too Jewish, I think there's really been a turnaround and, and um, there's been sort of a movement to get more Jewish stories out there, as you, as you were saying. So I just want, you know, people who aren't Jewish to see that, for example, in my story, um, I'm a Cuban Jew. So my mom is Cuban Jewish and uh, the setting, as I said, is overseas. Um, we were a family whose my father was serving our country 
in the Air Force. And I just think there's all kinds of Jewish representation. So I hope that's what uh, readers, you know, take away from this. Every I, I think this is a fantastic choice for reluctant readers because there is something for everyone from science fiction to very serious and reflective to um, Debbie's story, which is hysterical and yours is too, Jonathan, the humor, you have humor and heart both. And um, of course, that's what I try to do as well. I think that's what I want people to take away from this is that there's all kinds of representation, all kinds of Jewish families um, and every bar and bat mitzvah is very different too. Nora? Um, I, I I think that I, I, my character is hiding in a bathroom when it starts because she doesn't, she's afraid she won't get picked for a snowball and her friend is not Jewish. So I use the story to, to be humorous and entertaining, like Deborah said, and to have the crush thing because kids at this age, like the, the crush story. Um, but I, I really wanted to point out that what um, this celebration is, this coming of age is when a Jewish person, child, begins to take responsibility for themselves in the world. That it, they're, they're now, it's not their parents responsible for what they do. It is a little early, you know, and it, it's an ancient ritual. And, but we're be, kids are now recognizing that they're gonna be responsible for their actions. And that one of those actions is to, to repair the world and take care of other people. And that to me, when I chose to be Jewish, chose what I loved and I chose it, even though it was my, you know, given birthright, was that to be Jewish is to, um, repair the world, to take care of other people, to take care of animals. It's not about faith as much as what we do on this earth now. And I, um, I mean, it's not that it's not about faith, but it's about our life now here on earth and what we do to repair it. And um, I, I felt very strong, I feel very strongly about that um, part of Judaism. And I think that's what I hoped non-Jews, I think, would to actually, if I, if I think about it, would take, would learn, and and Jewish kids that might not realize, like like um, Melissa said, you know, you like, what am I doing this for? This is why you're doing it. So that's why. That's why. Thanks, Deborah. Um, yeah, I I really like that the anthology is so diverse, um, and it just comes. There's some stories in the past, some in the future, some in the present some in different countries, um, some are memoirs, some sci-fi. So I, I just love that about the book. And, and we didn't, I don't think we really planned it. Um, you know, Jonathan and, and Henry, the editors just asked what we wanted to write. And it's, it's great that every, even the ones that, like I have a contemporary humorous ones and, and there's other contemporary humorous ones, but even those are all different. So I love that about the book. Um, I'll say one thing about my story is um, I don't, I feel like this is a theme because my the book that came out last year also had pretty much the same theme is that um, you know she's really the main character is very envious of her cousin's bat mitzvah that, that took place before the pandemic and she just thinks the cousin is so lucky and why couldn't she have something like her cousin and then it turns out her cousin said oh no it was yeah, you think it was on this big yacht, but I got really seasick on the yacht. And, you know, the, the band leader kept telling me to dance and I was too sick and he didn't get my name wrong. And, you know, it turned out that it was a disaster. So but I feel like now with all these kids watching social media and they're thinking, you know, oh, look how beautiful this celebrity is and she's always happy. And, but, you know, they don't know, like she's had surgery and, you know, everything's filtered and she's, I, you know, when the camera's off, she's she's crying. So, um, so anyway, that theme kind of interests me, and and I put that in my story. Thanks, Melissa. You know, at the risk of being repetitive, and I I'll try not to be repetitive because that's really boring. Um, I just feel there's no one way to be Jewish. That we don't have to, and also being observant doesn't make you better or more Jewish or more important. We're all important, whether you're reform, conservative, orthodox, or Hasidic. 
we're all Jewish. And I don't think it's a competition about who gets to be the most Jewish. Like what Nora was saying, yes, she became, she was always Jewish, but she came into her Judaism. And I don't think it really matters that we put too much importance and emphasis on how we get there. But all that matters is we're here. Mm -hmm. And we're celebrating and we're commemorating and we're all Jews. And that's what, whether you're Jewish reading this book or you're a non-Jew, it doesn't matter. I mean, we're here and we're um, lucky to be here. And that's really it. Just be who you are and embrace who you are. And that's it. It's simple. Well said. No, for me, the same thing as we've been saying uh what I want people to take out, you know, from this story is that to me, the ceremony was the important thing, just the traditions were the important thing, not, not even necessarily the ceremony, you know, just the traditions. And to me was passing down. That's what, you know, I wanted to convey in my story. It didn't matter if you had a bar about mitzvah, you know, that, you know, 500 people went to, or like, you know, just a close thing of family. It's just that you're celebrating and, you know, taking part in, in something that has been done you know, many, many times before. That was the important thing to me. It didn't matter what celebrity was there, what family, you know, as long as you had, you know, something that you cared about. And that's what I want. And I want Jewish kids, like we said at the beginning, to see themselves. And I really want, because of all the anti-Semitism that we discussed, I want non-Jewish kids to be able to, like, see that all the kids are just like them. We may have different problems or something, but we go through, you know, we have the same worries and things like that and, and how we're going to deal with them. How do we approach them? So again, I, I thank I thank tremendously thank all of you for participating in this. I loved your stories and it meant a lot to me. And like I said, there was really no no one that turned down. Everyone pretty much eagerly jumped in. And uh, I thank I really do thank you all. And I thank Books and Books. And I'll, on that note, we'll take it back to Alyssa and thank you for organizing this. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you all. Um, thank you, Nora, Debbie, Deborah, Jonathan, and Melissa. That was an amazing presentation. Thank you all for joining us. Uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, we do have quite a few questions from the audience, so let's dive into that. Um, so first off, what can we do as readers to spread positivity and stop anti-Semitism? Anyone in particular? <laughs> Whoever wants to take uh, over. <laughs> Well, I think, that's like I'll I'll just jump in a little bit for that. I mean, again, I think it starts with kids, and that's one of the reasons that we first set out to do this is because it does you know does start with children. Uh, if children mm -hmm. grow up seeing everyone's you know more alike than different, perhaps we can stop it. It's you know hatred is learned as we all know, and uh, we can also learn not to not to hate and see kids like themselves. It's, you know, it's very tough already when you have a mindset when you're older, although you should change, but we we'll start, we're trying to do something. And, you know, this is not going to do a lot of it, but, you know, we're contributing how we can with a book for, for kids and hopefully kids can, can see something in that. And that's just getting out there. I mean, it's, but we do have to combat hate. And we've said there's so much, there's such a disproportionate amount of anti-Semitism that we have to start somewhere. Beautiful. I would say um, also, if you see something on social media, I know sometimes that's hard, but there's I I think it you should you should speak out because um, there's a lot of falsities that get conveyed. You know, Israel is not committing apartheid, so <laughs> I mean, I try to. Huh. I try to comment, even though I know people are going to get mad at me, but I'd rather people get mad at me and not just be silent um, uh, when I hear lies um, like that. I'm also just contributing to charities. There's some organizations that, um, and, and actually, you know, the, the book, 10% of the mm -hmm. book profits go to anti-Semitism. So, um, or, you know, if you can afford to contribute to your own. There's some really good charities, nonprofit organizations that are fighting um, anti-Semitism. People um, get toxic to you on social media? That's hard to believe. <laughs> also, if you're a, a teacher, 
a life right um, and you are teaching a unit on diversity yeah. um, please include this book it's that simple uh, other kids who've never met a Jewish person before need to read our stories and again, just pushing you it know, out there. I just want to Jewish pop books in are diverse with Debbie's books. meeting. Oh, sorry, yeah. Jonathan, go ahead. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. And also, I was going to say to Debbie, when I read Debbie's story, I'm a New York Jew. I grew up with a zillion Jewish people. I mean, the Jewish population in New York is astounding. And I read Debbie's story, and it was an eye opener for me. So can you imagine what an eye opener it is for non-Jews? So and that was autobiographical. That's an important point. The anti-Semitism. Exactly. Was and actually, um, sometimes exactly. I have done because in my last book, um, this is not the Abbey Show. It had a bar mitzvah in it, and the main character was Jewish. And I did some virtual visits, and the questions were not about uh, the book really. All the kids wanted to know: Are you Jewish? Ooh. They had never met a Jewish person before. Yeah, awesome. Debbie, I, I I love that you're saying that. I think Jew, Jewish books have not been considered diverse books, and I'm, yeah. I'm and well, you know, zero point one, zero point zero one percent of the world population, yeah. and you know, so that's, and and I agree. I've been places where nobody has seen a Jew before. Yeah, well, and and their and their conceptions are not pretty. Oh. <laughs> not at all. Well, thank you all for answering that one. Uh, the next one is, do Orthodox Jewish girls have bat mitzvahs today? I can answer that one. Um, this was my Both my sons were um, bar mitzvahed in an Orthodox, believe it or not, <laughs> where I came from. Um, not because I'm Orthodox or we were, but that's where we went. And um, the girls are not allowed to read from the Torah in the Orthodox tradition, but they will now have uh, ceremonies on the nights where the Torah is not opened and, and they'll do sort of a, at least th this is my experience, they will do some kind of um, ceremony and acknowledgement of, and, and they're also 12, not not 13 in the Orthodox, mm -hmm. but if you are, they're, if they're strictly observant, they, they aren't allowed to do what um, the boys are allowed to do, but which is why I'm not Orthodox. One of the many reasons I strike that. Okay, but that—that's the—that is the answer to that. If they just wanted a simple. Thank you. Uh, so the next question from Shannon is: How many stories are there in total? Good number, thirteen. <laughs> Relevant for yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um. Okay. So we have. One more question and then a couple comments. Okay. Uh, do you okay. think that as we live in an era when people are trying to extend adolescence into middle age and defying age is so popular that a rite of passage such as bar mitzvah, bat mitzvah takes on even more relevance? Hmm. That's a great question. Yeah. I think that's well, great. That's, yeah. Well, I when I had my bar mitzvah ten years ago, it um, so I'm not that far removed from it. So maybe that someone else would like to answer. Nice. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I mean, I think really it's it's a uh, it's always relevant, regardless of whatever is happening um, culturally in the zeitgeist in whatever time we're in. I mean, that to Jonathan's point earlier, his story is so much about passing on that tradition. And uh, Barbara Botner had a story in the 1920s in, in our book. And I think regardless of whatever is going on, whether it's an extended adolescence that we all don't want to grow up, that doesn't change the importance and the milestone of, of anyone's bar or bat mitzvah. You know what, though? You know what? You know what I would add to that, though, if I'm if I'm hearing the question right, because we, we are in kind of a crisis of, of adolescence extending. You know, we are. Yeah. But um, for my sons, mm -hmm. it's simply learning and their their bar mitzvah to dress nicely, look people in the eye, grow up. Yes. Um, it changed. I believe, and to speak in front of people, to speak articulately, to be gracious. Yes, I think it is takes on more importance in in this day because of 
because of that and then and it changed them and yes my answer is yes <laughs> so thank you thank you <laughs> Uh, so a few comments now. So Dorian said, I don't have a question, but wanted to say it was great to hear everyone's stories and thoughts, and I look forward to reading all the stories. Thanks, Thank Dorian. you. Thanks, Dorian. Thanks, Dorian. And then Pamela. We don't know her, by the way. We I know, know. I know. Yes, I know. know Dorian. <laughs> Dorian who? Yeah, we love her. <laughs> Pamela said, girls did not have bar mitzvahs when I was 13. I'm mad at myself for not questioning it then. Mm. It, that's uh, really, that's <laughs> I know, I, right. I'm never too late. But I'm, I, my, I was a reformed Jew and, and we did have uh, bar mitzvahs. And my, I was really lucky that my parents really you know, I, 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 there's four kids in my family, two girls and two boys, and the girls were encouraged to get educated and have careers just as much as the boys were. But I will say in, in junior high, which is called middle school now, the girls had to take sewing and cooking and the boys had to take shop, which was like electrical, wood car, really? all the cool stuff, car, like auto shop. I took I, shop. I took yeah. shop. I had to sew, which I hated, and cook, which I hated, and clean. So, and I never said anything either because I thought this was how it was. And so, I don't think you should blame yourself because you know I was, I was thirteen, you know. And maybe if you were twenty-five and you didn't say anything, then you know you wouldn't feel guilty or something. But that's just how it was, and and, and I accepted it. But yeah, I'm still mad that I have to take sewing and cooking. <laughs> so it's still not too late. Right. That's right. 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 So the last comment that we have, um, oh, we had some extras. Um, on. Elizabeth McEwen said, I don't have a question, but just sending love to you all, especially Debbie, who has always been so gracious to Palm Beach County students at BAM. Yeah. Thank you. Aww. Elizabeth, love you. What, what the heck, Elizabeth? Why especially Debbie? I thought we were close to her. Right? I don't like this at all. I'm leaving. <laughs> Yay, Debbie. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So does anyone want to add any final comments before I wrap things up? Thank you to you, Alyssa, thank for you. doing this and especially books thank and books. Thank you. Yes, thank you. Thank it's very, you. very yes. gracious. And click that green button on the bottom to, to order the book. Yes. <laughs> So thank you to our partners at Miami Book Fair, the Albert Whitman and Company, and to all of you for watching and reading. I hope you will support Nora Riley Baskin, Debbie Reed Fisher, Deborah Green, Jonathan Rosen, and Melissa Ross, and independent bookstores by ordering your copy of Coming of Age down below. <laughs> I hope everyone has a great night, and thank you all for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.